Zoom. So welcome. I'm Andrew. I am Dave. And I'm Dan. We're going to post script live at on Facebook, Galatians chapter five. Um, we've had some, they kind of tightened up the mandates here in Pennsylvania today and it's really cold on my porch. I went out there earlier today and it's, it's cold and my blood is pretty thin because I'm older and I grew up in Texas. So, you know, there's that. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing pretty well. I'm ready for some conversation. I'm beat. It's a long day. All right. Well, why don't you guys start? And I'm going to see if I can figure out if there's what. Okay. I'm going to do some other stuff over here with our with our Facebook live feed while you guys talk about Galatians five. All right. Oh, okay. What do you want to talk about, Dan? Oh, this is a this is a good one this week. I. I I really resonated. Tim had a nice book at the beginning talking about seeing people that uh, say things and do things that that weren't what you expected. And I, I don't know, that was a good hook. It, it got me, it certainly got my attention. Um, and uh, I'm always interested in thinking about this concept of the Holy Spirit and, and guiding our lives. And you talked about this pathway to, to understanding what it, what it means and the fruits of, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, I think all this is good stuff. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a good Sunday. It gave me a lot to think about. Um, so let me start with that before I bring up any questions. Hershey, how about you? What, what, uh, what were your immediate thoughts? Oh man, I don't even remember. Sunday was like a million years ago. I just <laughs> remember it was, it was, it was some good stuff. And I think, um, I took notes and I don't know where my th my book is. Oh, wait. I took notes to refresh my memory. Like Indiana Jones senior, I wrote it down in my diary so I wouldn't have to remember. I like the idea of movement. I think that's a good concept just because mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that sticks out to me. Cause I think so much of my Christian background has been focused on like Tim talked about for him. Um, are you in or are you out? And that's kind of like a static thing. You're either in one right. group or you're not. And this idea of, of movement, whether you're moving towards Christ or away from Christ, I think on one hand is challenging for those who of us who consider ourselves Christians, because it means that we still have more stuff to do. You know, and I think it's also more inviting for people who may not consider themselves in because it's not a matter that, you know, then we look at the world and say, they're all just out, like even without, people are still moving in a direction. People may be out, but moving towards or away. People may be, I just really, I like the idea of movement um, for anybody, whether as opposed to the idea of just in or out, so. Yeah. My dog is chewing his bone in the background, by the way. If anybody can hear that, I apologize. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's good, Dave. Um, yeah, I remember the first time I heard this whole concept of the bounded set and so on and so forth. Um, it's probably been it's probably been several years now, but I think the first time I heard that was at Koinos, and it was pretty mind blowing for me uh, the first time, and I think opened me up to a whole new realm of thinking about about faith um, in Jesus Christ. So. I think, though, at the same time, our our human nature, we just love to categorize and we love to create, as we've talked about so many times these last several weeks, we love to create these lines and boundaries and and create in groups that usually we're a part of um, and then the out groups as well. And so even with this concept, I think it's easy to slip into, OK, well, what does it mean to be moving toward Jesus? Right. Um even then, I think the temptation is there for us to still find ways to, to create those lines. Um, but it is a much more helpful framework uh, to approach what it means to, to follow Jesus, what it means to, to live and move in this world, um, hopefully under the guidance of the Spirit. Do you think... 
something you said there. Do you think people ever do the in group out group thing, but put themselves in the out group? Uh, yeah, I think it, I think at times, um, <laughs> honestly, I think we maybe we would be better off if we did that more often. If we made that a practice, right. um, I think this was our post postscript last week. But the three of us, I think, after the cameras off, we were we were kind of talking a little bit about this. Um, and uh, one, I don't know if I can call it a conclusion, but one thing that that I have been, I guess, thinking more and more often these last few years is that, um, you know, maybe our, first of all, I think this is pretty biblical, but I think maybe our primary responsibility, first of all, is to, to look at ourselves, to analyze our own life and, and what are we doing that is not moving towards Jesus, that is not moving towards the Christ. Um, what within ourselves do we need to work on? And, uh, you know, of course, Jesus talks about the log in your eye versus the, the speck in your brother's eye and, and so on and so forth. So I think that's a pretty biblical thought to first and foremost, what, what can I do? What, what do I need to work on before we worry so much about everybody else and what they need to do, how they can be doing better. We need to start with ourselves and then building from that. I think that we also have then a responsibility to, to the people that we live closest to, to the people in our immediate communities. Um, again, before looking at, before looking outside of the people that we know best, the people that we're closest to, we need to analyze our families and our close friends and, and so on and so forth. What, what are the people in my community? What, what do we need to be doing to move towards Jesus? And maybe at the bottom of the list is everybody else, you know, <laughs> and, and only then can we really start to, worry about what other people are doing. I think it has to start with us and our communities first um, is what I think of in terms of that, that bounded set and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And I, I, I always like, I mean, I say this all the time on Sunday nights, but I, I love when Jesus says it and I love that Paul says it here. Um, he says that, uh, he says, for the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I heard once years ago, somebody said something to the effect of, you know, when you don't know what's right, err on the side of love. Um, you know, make, make the mistake, of, <laughs> if you can call it a mistake, of loving too much um, rather than not loving enough. If you aren't quite sure what the right thing to do is, uh, it's usually better to, to love first. Um, and that's, that's often easier said than done, but I, I appreciate that Paul mentions that here as well. Beware of destroying one another. Instead, love your neighbor as yourself. So this didn't get hit necessarily on Sunday, but the very first chap verse of the chapter, he says, it's for freedom that you've been set free. Right. And I think we kind of, and this comes back to what you were talking about is this, this it's central that we kind of, you know, I think Jesus would, Jesus talks about, you know, you clean the inside of the dish and then the outside becomes pure or clean. You don't, you don't clean the outside hoping the filth and gook at, will come out of that cup. You clean what's on the inside, but this this concept of, of being free and being set free. Um, a lot of times I think, especially in, in our, American context of freedom and liberty, it's kind of that libertarian sense of I can do whatever I want to, and you can't infringe on any of my rights and anything I want to do. Um, if, if you're a libertarian, you're watching that, that's great. Politics aside, I'm, I'm talking more about a, just a personal, <laughs> personal life choice of, hey, I can be as free as I want to be. And, and that's what it is to be free, is to do whatever I want to, go wherever I want to, say whatever I want to, um, and, and if I do all that, then I'm being free, but really those freedoms tend to restrict how you treat your neighbor and how you love your neighbor and what you're doing to be, um, what true freedom is. And one of the things that Tim mentioned, and I'm not going to get it right, but he talked about some of these evil things that they were doing, um, that were really a kind of a, an ugly parody of what community is like. Mm -hmm. um, and then he comes down to the end of the chapter, Paul does, and he says, 
there's no law against this. There's no law against self-control and patience and goodness and kindness and gentleness, magnanimity or generosity, right? There's, there's no, no law against that, right? But all this other stuff, if you kind of look at that, it's like, oh yeah, you, can, you can't get drunk in public and get away with it 100% of the time. You know, there's these things that like, okay, there's some laws and reasons why you shouldn't be there. And so those res- really can restrict your freedom if you begin to abuse them. But if you're endlessly patient, then you're the one of the most free people I know. <laughs> if you can put up with me for however long you've put up with me, then um, you must have quite a bit of freedom in your life. And so I just think that freedom component is what kind of influences how we live in the spirit and not according to the flesh. And right. it, it, it starts with this freedom that kind of is inside of us because of what the Holy Spirit has done. Um, and it's not restrictive of other people. It's really just freeing of us. But right. that freedom expresses itself in love. Yeah. I was going to say, you used libertarian earlier. And yeah, like point of, of clarity, you were not speaking of libertarian like politics. You were using it in more of the kind of philosophical libertarian free will, like all these terms, um, you know, mean slightly different things depending on where you're using them. But I think that does tie the in. Field of, the I, field of context is different. Yeah. Right. But I think a lot, I mean, that can get kind of philosophical, but I think the idea is that some maybe I think our cultural some people at least have this understanding like you were saying a freedom where it's almost like like libertarian free will at least as I understand it as a totally amateur you know philosophy minded person is you can just choose whatever you want in any situation without any external constraints whatsoever and I think one of my favorite theologians David Bentley Hart kind of talks about that as a brute fact and he contrasts that with this idea that what he believes, which I think makes more sense to me, is that we make every choice we make towards some end. That would be like a teleological, like what is the end goal? And there are no like brute choices or brute facts. Everything is either to use the movement piece, either moving towards a good end, which I think as Christians we would say moving towards Christ, or moving towards a destructive end. And when we act in freedom, like true freedom then is acting in kindness and in love defined as towards that end where we become the kind of people God created us to be in Christ, not just, well, I'm free to do whatever I want, whenever I want to open-ended, no external constraints, no sort of rule laws or end goals or whatever. Um, I hope that made some semblance of sense. <laughs> and, and the tour. And, and when you talk about being towards Christ, it's, it's seeing Christ in your neighbor, right? And so you're making a movement towards Christ when you're showing love for the person that maybe drives you nuts or parks on the wrong side of the street or blocks your driveway or whatever that that is. That's you seeing Jesus in them somehow and moving towards them, right? Yeah. So yeah, thinking about the freedom, like that is our, our truest state of being, um, right. Is these, these fruits of the spirit that our truest state of being is to be loving and joyful and to, to make peace wherever we go to be patient, etc. Um, and I think you see that, you know, any, anybody that you admire, so anybody in your life that you're like, wow, that, that person has figured it out. They, they are living a good life. They're, they're truly happy. Um, I think exemplifies those things, you know, you know, and, and so when we look at these desires of our sinful nature, I, I agree with you, Andrew. I really like that, that Tim pointed out that so many of these are, are just distortions. Our, our community lived falsely. Um, they're community oriented toward the self. Um, you know, and he talked about sexual immorality, looking for self gratification from someone else, objectification of the other, um, idolatry, sorcery, control, right? And, and ex- and forcing your will on, on the world. Um, even, even the whole wild parties thing, you know, it's all this false form of, of our true existence. Um, 
almost a, a distortion or, or an opposite and maybe not an opposite, but definitely a distortion. So to, to live by the spirit, to experience that freedom. So to experience that freedom, you know, this, that he talks about at the beginning, Christ has truly set us free. This is, this is the way we're meant to live. Um, not trying to follow all these rules and do it the right way, but this sense of freedom, the people who are not, who I know who are truly free, who seem to be free, who are, are living good lives. I think they figured that out to some extent. Um, and I can see that fruit in their lives. And I, I guess not to completely pivot here, but one thing that I've been thinking about since Sunday uh, that Tim mentioned is, you know, what is our base point? Where, where are we starting from um, as we go throughout our day? So a question, I guess, I would love to hear from you guys is what is your base point? How do you start your day? How are you living to be, <laughs> to be coming from this perspective, to be guided by the Christ and, and to live that way? Um, yeah. yeah. One, so I, I'll let you think about that for a second. I, I heard once, uh, I read once, you know, well, this, this is again, something from, from the Bible, but you know, where your treasure is, there your heart is. And I think that looking at the ways that I spend my time, I spend my money, um, the things that I do with my resources, my time and my money, basically, that probably says a lot about what I value, the direction I'm going in my life. Um, and so I, I think about that a lot and, and what Tim said on Sunday kind of brought that up for me. So yeah, what, what is it that, that you do at the beginning of your day or midday, end day, what, whatever it might be that mm -hmm. kind of keep grounded and oriented in this? Well, I, I want to say kind of with the flesh and the spirit, you know, living according to flesh, living according to the spirit, you can't just, I mean, you know, th those fruit, those things are born out, not through direct action, right? I can go out and choose to get drunk, right? Those some, there's some actions I would take to make myself get to that point, right? It, but in the same, but, but those are all direct actions. It's some, I'm going to drink a whole lot and just keep it, keep going, right? But to be patient, I can't just grit my teeth it's, I'm going to be patient because then I'm going to have an aneurysm or mm. pop a blood vessel or something like that. So you have to, you have to do some things indirectly in order to sow to the spirit. Um, that's some biblical, that's some churchy word stuff right there. But in order for you to see those, the, the fruit kind of born out in your life, you have to, you have to do some physical things. You have to do some mental things. You have to do some things that will help you um, align yourself with the spirit, so to speak. And so, yeah, that's where the day starts with. Well said. It doesn't, that's, that's yeah, it doesn't, it just doesn't start with you um, getting straight on your social media feed or checking the news or checking your email or anything like that. All the stuff that we, we know we shouldn't do before we go to bed to, to, to wind down, we don't just wind right back up in the morning um, and just launch back into it um, again. And I think maybe Dave was talking about this when we first came on or before we came on even was this kind of this, um, I don't know, what were we talking about with the, with the, the Sark, right? The flesh and how I'm going to just, I'm going to kick it to you, Dave, because I can't remember exactly how that was going. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I was just I thinking. Think it, I think it ties into that. Sure. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll try to provide my answer to Dan's question. I think it'll tie in with that. Um, yeah, and I think Tim on Sunday really talked about the first thing in the morning, and I totally agree with that. But I also think for me, and everybody's different, of course, but it's not like, and Tim was not implying this either, but it's not like that, you know, you wake up in the first part of the morning you spend in prayer and scripture. And that kind of, that does set the tone for the day, but it's not like it's a magic thing where then the rest of the day is automatically good. Because I know for me, it's just how you spend all the rest of the day is just as important. And I think part of the challenge of living by the spirit of Christian discipleship is, is that a lot of us and a lot of Christians for the last many years have not 
have, have listened to a lot of things that are not healthy and we still do it. I mean, we could name names, but I think the challenge is that you spend an hour in church on Sunday and then you spend hours each day listening to angry talk radio, watching angry TV, um, news people, you know, now that was 25, 30 years ago, 10 years ago. Now it's the social, social media plays a huge part. And, you know, if it's an hour on Sunday versus hours of other stuff during the day, that's going to cultivate certain fruit in your life. Um, and that's why I would say that even if it's an hour on Sunday at church and 10 minutes in the morning, but then the rest of my day, and I know during um, the pandemic, being home more with my kids, even having a job where I'm working on my computer a lot. I mean, those social media sites, news sites are, are addictive. Like, and that kind of goes to the flesh, sinful nature thing. Like these things are not neutral. And I think this is something you can watch, like any documentary that talks about this stuff. The social dimension was a recent one. I mean, this is something that even people who are not coming necessarily from a Christian perspective realize. It's not like all this stuff is just out there and I can choose to, you know, use 20 minutes, an hour on Facebook or not. And whatever I choose is not going to affect, like all these things are going to affect you. And they're, they're idols that demand your eyes upon them. And I think, um, you know, I think it's, it's healthy to read the news and to know what's going on in the world. But I know for myself, I mean, if I'm going through my day and I'm, you know, checking Twitter and I see some stupid thing, some ignorant person said who honestly, it doesn't matter, but it's like, Oh, I've heard of that person. Some of my friends listen to that guy. Oh, I wonder what he said is making people mad. I'm going to go find out and see what people are saying about how he's doing. And then it's just like, I step back and you're like, what difference does it make? Like what difference does it make at all? And I think there's something, I mean, I remember before Twitter, not that, I mean, what, 10, 12 years ago, the same sort of things. Like someone writes a blog post about some pastor on the other side of the country and the false views this person has. And it's, you know, maybe if that, you know, if, if someone I know is reading a book by that person, it might be good to know, but does it really matter? And I think that's where that flesh and simple nature, that, that gossip, that, I don't know. I think we have to go through our day learning to either sit in silence or, or, or think of pray or, or whatever. Um, and not that we need to become Amish and totally cut off from these things. I don't think we should need to totally cut off from the world. That's probably impossible, but learning to have a healthy connection to um, the things that will benefit the fruit of the spirit. First thing in the morning, if possible, um, depending on your situation in life. I mean, my kids wake me up sometimes before I get up. So the first thing in the morning is getting them breakfast. But then even kind of throughout the day, just being aware of what we're putting our mind towards. And something you mentioned, if you're getting on social media or whatever, then you, again, that's just, that that's not even, um, it's not even real community necessarily, right? talking about some, you, you're having a conversation with somebody you're not really even in relationship with. You're talking about them or gossiping or whatever. So you, again, it comes back to that. That's not really what community is. Community is like knowing someone and wanting to build them up as opposed to tear them down. Um, and yeah, I think part of what we can do throughout the day, we, we, um, we have to be more reflective. We're not super reflective in what's going on around us, whether that's an action that we just took or the, something that's in the news cycle or um, something that may have impacted a lot of people that maybe didn't impact you at all, but you kind of reflect on that. So there's observation, there's reflection, there's discussing it, whether that's writing it down in a journal someplace or having a conversation like this, and then kind of taking those things saying, okay, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I'm, what, what, what's kind of churning in me. Now, what do I need to do about that? You know, is there something that I need to do to, um, to learn from this and to grow and, to, and to flourish better? Because if there was something negative that was happening, I, I don't want that to happen again. So what am I going to learn from that? Or if there's something that's really great and it's like, oh, I, I am more patient. Why am I, why is that happening? And you begin to kind of take yourself through this process of observing, reflecting, discussing with other people, maybe writing down a plan for, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to do? 
being accountable to others in that plan and then acting on it and just continue to act on it. And you're living in community with other people in that. Um, and the expectation is that you're all, it's kind of, the, again, that bounded set versus centered set. You're all moving towards Christ and you're like, hey, I'm trying this. Sure. Well, you could try this too. So, hmm? oh. Go ahead, Dave. Hmm. I was going to say either I froze for a moment or you did, but it's okay. Okay. No, we're good now. I see everybody. Hmm. I remember um, this is what I've always loved about community groups. Um, this is not <laughs> this is not necessarily intended to be a, a sales pitch, but what I always loved about community groups was um, and what <clears throat> you taught me actually was to to slow down with people that I trusted and to not just talk about how um, I couldn't believe that these people were saying that or that those people did this, um, which is often what, what social media, and not to keep bragging on social media, but you know, I think lots of even in-person gatherings sometimes can turn into just talking about them, and those other people, what they're doing, how awful it is. But what I really loved about community groups, the ones that I've been a part of is that they were pretty intentionally spaces to analyze how I was doing and how I felt and how those things made me feel and how I was responding to them. So rather than talking, and that's something that I try to, I try to carry with me still outside of those spaces with friends is instead of us just talking, you know, Mallory and I the other night, instead of just talking about how angry those people make us when they say this thing, um, we try to look at a little bit more of um, why do I feel angry about this and um, and what is this doing to me and, and what's coming up with me and, and how am I responding to that rather than just, um, um, you know, I can't think of anything else to say, but, you know, rather than just complaining, wh what is it doing to me? Why am I responding in this way? And, and really reflecting on that. Um, and I think this is probably the last couple of years, especially are a good time for all of us to be doing more of that and reflecting on why, why we respond the way we do and how, how we feel. And, and as a result, those things that make us angry, what can we do about them um, is important. And I think that's the, I think that's a positive action that we need to take um, rather than the outbursts of anger and, and division and so on that Paul is here. Um, what can we do about it? And um, if we're talking about action, I think that's maybe the direction we need to be looking at. Just some thoughts on reflection from what you said, Andrew. Well, and part of, part of that, again, the indirect stuff that you can do is something Dave mentioned, it's silence or solitude or yeah. just, sit, just sitting because we tend to we try to justify ourselves with our words, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm horrible about that because, you know, I have two grown kids and sometimes I still treat them like they're little kids. I'm just like, Andrew, take the blame yourself. Quit with the, don't try to justify what you just did. You just, you were not very nice or you were bossy or whatever it was that you were just then. And, but we try to, we try to, instead of justifying ourselves with our words, just let our actions speak for themselves. Um, and one way to train ourselves in that is to not talk, you know, not, not speak every time we feel like we should speak. Um, and again, that's just, that, that's a training opportunity for us to not always have something to say. Right. Well, and it's always, there's always nuance to this because I think that wisdom is knowing when not to speak and when to speak, because there are times that we, we do have to speak up. We do have to challenge power and, and um, we do have to challenge things that are happening that are wrong, things that are evil. Um, well, and, but I and, think you'll to, and, and you'll know better when to speak up if yeah. you're not always speaking. Exactly. But that, I think that's where the wisdom comes. Exactly. And I know I have been through a time in my life where I was very focused on, we always, you know, we, 
we always want to call this out and we always want to speak up and, and all that, which is, there's truth in that. Um, but I think that we best know when those moments are, how to make the most of those moments, and when to trust the spirit by learning to be silent and to listen, to pay attention. Um, I think we'll have a better, we'll have a better ear for that kind of a thing when we do that. Exactly, just like you said. And yeah, and it, it, it's a trust thing. It's trusting that I don't have to justify myself. It's mm -hmm. trusting that I don't have to be right. It's trusting that maybe God is working in that person's life and I don't have to try to be the convicting of the Holy Spirit for them. Maybe mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's going to do that mm -hmm. just by my presence, just by being with that person, yeah. not judging them, not trying to give them advice, even though I've got all the best advice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tongue in cheek. I actually think speaking of community group that the book we're reading touched on this subject this past week, I think um, talking about listening to people and, and being confident in your identity and not having to constantly, like you said, justify yourself when you're speaking with somebody and asking questions rather than yelling at people or whatever. So. So, so talk about that. What kind of questions do you ask? When, like, especially if it's somebody that you maybe disagree with, what, what type of questions would you ask? I don't know. I can't think of a hypothetical off the top of my head, but the world is flat, Dave. Yeah. What would you say uh, to that? <laughs> I mean, that one, I might just laugh at you, but it's cool. <laughs> I would, I mean, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not good at this. I like a good, a good friendly debate, but I think I'm, I'm learning. I mean, I work with college students and sometimes they like to debate with me. I mean, we've done things over the years where we meet for the specific point of like arguing and um, mm -hmm. not, not arguing, but like discussing. So, I, but I think it depends on the person I think who you're talking to and your relationship with them um, in the situation. If somebody asks me a question and they really want my answer or they're trying to like, you know, get me in a corner I mean, I know a big one that has come up over the years is um, college students ask about all the time. I've had people ask about it. It's kind of like the creation evolution is one. And, you know, I have my theology and, and beliefs, which are correct for the record. But depending who asked me, and I, I can, you can tell, like, is this someone who just wants to find out that I believe the wrong thing? Well, I'm not <laughs> yeah. just going to necessarily claim that. I might just be like, well, why do you think that? You know, um, what makes you think this is important or whatever? So I think trying to make people help people think about what they think just as you would do for yourself. You know, if someone asked me if I asked somebody like, Oh, this is what I think. And they're like, well, why do you think that? I'm like, Oh, I don't know. So try to understand where the person's coming from, which I think we kind of talked about earlier a little bit. That's good. I'm just curious is, I mean, I don't think the world's flat, but that's that's one of those things where you're like, well, why would you think that, right? Why why is that that you? Why do you hold that worldview or whatever? Yeah, okay. Um, I had another thing we could talk about that was slightly different, but it was from something Dan said a while ago that popped into my mind. I think is it kind of goes along with everything, I guess. So, do we want to move on or should we stick with this? Thing? Okay, which is no. It's free flowing. <laughs> I think something with the um, living by the fruit of the spirit as, as the way God wants you to live and, and all those things. For me, it's been a big change in my life and I'm still, or just how I think about God to, I think growing up, I very much understood that God punishes people who get out of line. You know, if, if, if you don't, if you, if you do the works of the, of the, of the sinful nature, if you go to the drunken parties or you do the lies and the gossip, God's going to like zap you. And it's almost like I, I had this, this understanding that God commands were almost like arbitrary. God just said, these are the things to do. And these aren't just because like, kind of like God's a cosmic abusive father, because I said so. And if you step on, I'll beat you. And I've come to see that at least my understanding now is that it doesn't work like that. It's, it's not that if you, if you are a greedy person, then God's going to smack you around now or in the future. 
But if you're a greedy person, that's how you live. That is going to self-destruct. Like these things don't need an outside force to punish you because by living in these ways, you're choosing a path that is self-destructive. And in the mm -hmm. same way, it's not like if you are follow some arbitrary commands and live in this way, God's going to be like, Oh, good job. You did my arbitrary commands. No, it's like, if you live as a loving, kind, generous, such, such person, that is ultimately going to give you life. And that's a, do you see the difference there? I mean, it's different. Good night, buddy. <laughs> hmm. The difference, do you see the difference between sin being self-destructive versus sin being something arbitrary God just punishes you for? Yeah. Well, saying. yeah. I mean, it, 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 there are consequences to the things that you do, right? And those those consequences can be um, negative or positive, right? Right. And so, but the consequence, like, but I, right, but the consequences aren't just like if you are greedy, God's gonna the consequences destroy you. The consequences are if you're greedy, greed is going to destroy you. And it's going to break your relationships. It's going to, it's right, going to do exactly. all, it, it's destructive in and of itself. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. So, it's like, um, yeah, you're, you're walking into it. You're walking into a self-created hell or something. Right. Yeah. Well, um, so yeah, I, I'm looking at back at like verse seven, eight, nine, it says you were running well, who hindered you? So you're, so that you were not persuaded by the truth. What persuades you is not coming from the one who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole mass of dough. And so there's these little things that start seeping in that are opposed to us living according to the spirit, right? And so, and they're destructive, right? Just a little bit kind of seeps in and it just grows and grows and grows and grows. So you, you don't start out just being greedy necessarily, but you get a little taste for it. And you go, okay, that's pretty good. I like that. And pretty soon you're kind of, you know, that's that centered set. You're kind of walking in the opposite direction. You know, talk about movement. It's not always movement towards something. A lot of times it's just movement away from mm -hmm. that center, which is Christ. Um, because yeah, I think there's, that's where we kind of get our, we get, start chasing stuff, right? We start mm -hmm. chasing after whether it's, um, I have to look in the look at the list of d horrible things, right? But um, we start moving away from center because we're following. We're we're moving away from center as opposed to moving towards something. Like there's not a goal right. in that, you know. The goal is not to be more greedy. The goal is to like fill something up in here that we think is right. missing. Yeah, I think of having like having kids. You know, like if my kids when they're little and they're learning about heat if they touch the hot stove, I don't need to like the punishment is not, if you touch hot stove, I'm going to spank you. The punishment is if you touch hot stove, you're going to get burned. Um, I think we even see the same thing in some of Jesus parables, like Jesus invites you to a banquet. It's not so much that if you don't come, then God's going to beat up on you. It's if you don't come, you're cutting yourself off from the only source of life. And to take the, the movement analogy to not enter the banquet is to move away from the banquet. So uh, it's, it gives me a different view of God in that way. So do we kind of answer the, the earlier question about that Dan had on moving like living in the spirit or seeing that fruit born out in our lives. I think all that ties into that is that where are you focused, right? What are, what kind of habits do you, I mean, really it's funny because it's like it, it, anything that's, that, that's good, you, you developed a habit for, right? Whether it's eating right or exercise or having a life that's the good life according to Christ, right? you set up your day, you, you make a plan to 
try to live within that, right? And give, give yourself some parameters to go, okay, by being really free, I, ha I have to like, you know, one of the words that he uses for the fruit of the spirit is there's a self mastery or self control, right? And so that sounds like restrictive, but it's really freeing because you're harnessing your thoughts and mind, you're, you're harnessing your thoughts, you're harnessing your emotions to do to do God's work, to be the kind of person that he wants you to be. Um, and there's a lot of freedom in that. Um, but the other side of that, the debauchery, there's no freedom in that because you wake up having nothing to show for it other than probably some broken relationships and bad breath. I was, um, the other night I had, uh, I was, with a couple of a uh, couple of younger guys, um, Highway 712, Highway 712 alumni, if you will, um, and we were just kind of hanging out, talking about life and direction and, and what's important in life, and um, that's something that we we talked about. Like it's so easy, and, this, and you know, I just entered my 30s last year, so like I'm starting to see you know friends whom I've known for a long time how their lives are changing. And so in my own life, how I've changed, it's so easy, um, especially in a, a society where we have so many opportunities, so many things available to us, good and bad. Um, it's really easy to get distracted. And um, for the things that guide us to, to shift to concepts of success that are not... Um, you know, are not biblical or not of Christ or not this idea of loving your neighbor as yourself, loving God. Um, it's really easy to be distracted and think that the things that matter the most are to be comfortable, to have all the things that you've ever wanted, um, to have a, a really nice paycheck every Friday, you know, to get distracted by some of these things. And to the point that, you know, as we continue to immerse ourselves in this, this society where these things are available to us, we, we start to think that those are, are where the good life is. And um, over time, it's, it's rarely, rarely happens in one decision. As, as Tim said on Sunday, you know, we, we kind of know from the beginning when our direction shifts, what's not going to be good for us, but it happens slowly over time. Um, and before we know it, yeah, I think, I think some of those some of those desires, some of those things are available to us that are not good for us really take over. Um, and so what I was telling them, you know, as younger people who are just kind of starting their adult lives, is I encourage them to remind yourself all the time of, of the good things that are guiding you right now. Um, you know, of serving your community, being a part of, of Point Austin in, in different ways and serving in different ways there and, and, you know, these, these concepts of, of this love that, that Christ shows us and, um, you know, letting those be our guides and, and pursuing those things um, throughout life, even, even as our responsibilities change, even as, you know, we need to have an income and, and have a family and all that stuff. Um, it's important that we keep those guiding principles kind of at the center of all that and build those things around these principles. And that, I think that's how we continue to move in the right direction um, and not get pulled off to the side and, and start to take the wrong fork in the road. How did they respond? Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Positively, yeah, positively, yeah, I mean, I think that it's something that I think it's something we need to remind ourselves constantly. I, re, I remind myself, try to remind myself of this all the time. And I told them, I was like, you know, I remember when I was your age, I've seen plenty of people that, you know, I was 17, 18, 19 with them and, and we're all in our past 30. Now I've seen how their lives have changed and how my life has changed and, and for good and, and for bad ways. And it's easy for it to, to happen. And, and, you know, they already see it. They already see how those, you know, those things can pull, pull you away. Um, you can be so, come so hyper-focused on those ideas of, of success or the good life that they're not what, what Paul lays out for us here, what Jesus lays out for us. 
um, I think they see it now, but uh, it's something we always have to remind ourselves or uh, remind each other. And I think along with that, it's, I mean, it's not like you wake up one day and right. totally live a totally different way than you lived every day before. I mean, maybe that happens to some people occasionally, but it's, it's going to, whether it's the, 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 the good path or the works of the flesh path, whichever path it is, I mean, I'm not going to be a thousand times more patient tomorrow than I am today, or I'm not going to be a thousand times more self-centered than I am today. Right. I mean, I'm probably going to wake up tomorrow and maybe be a tiny bit kinder or maybe a tiny bit more self-centered. And I think that kind of goes what you're saying, Dan, is if, but if you're not careful, like I think this is what made me think of is all those little decisions do make a life and Mm. it's it's hard to change um i think sometimes some christians make it sound like you just you know get saved and get jesus and and everything's different the next day and again maybe that is for some people maybe i just don't have enough faith i don't know maybe i need more spirit in my life but in my experience it's definitely like tiny changes over the course of many years yeah. um is what is what decide what it makes so yeah like like the, the, the college students I work with or the high school kids at Coinos, they're not going to wake up when they're 45 and be, or they are going to wake up when they're 45 and the person they are at that age is going to at least be somewhat rude in the choices they're making then little, little choices. So. It's incremental and it's intentional, right. Or unintentional, it's, but it's always incremental. Like there's these little bitty things that you do. And if you're intentional about where you want to go, then you have to still do those incremental things to get you there. Um, if you're doing incremental things and there's no intention, you have nothing, you don't have a, any kind of, like if you're not trying to close the gap between who you are and who you want to be in Jesus, then you'll end up wherever you end up, right? Right. Um, you'll get, you'll, if you aim at nothing, you'll get it every time or something like that, right? And so, but it is, yeah, you guys are dead on. And I'm sorry, but I think I was, get, I was getting some tea in here a minute ago <laughs> and it like burned my <laughs> hands. <laughs> but I think the Perhaps. challenge though, too, and I think Dan kind of touched on this, the challenge is that we have these, we're, we're all, there's no neutral messages anywhere. Like everything wants to sell you something. You know, everywhere you look, you're, you're getting a message. I mean, Andrew, you've been through the, the college visits the, the colleges, you know, they, they want to sell you something. They, they, there's the promises are being made. The, the version of the good life is being sold everywhere you go, every commercial. And, you know, we like to think those things don't influence us, but I think that kind of goes with it too. If you're constantly being bombarded every step of the way, every person you talk to, every song on the radio, every podcast, every whatever, that happiness is putting yourself first and having the good life I mean, eventually you're going to believe it no matter how many Sundays you show up at church because that one hour of church a week has a really hard time comparing, competing with. And I'm not saying that to guilt trip. I mean, I recognize that we all have to live through life. It's not like we can become monks. So again, I'm not like well, trying to guilt trip anybody, but it's just recognizing the, just the challenges of, of how countercultural living kind of like this other centered life is. I mean, I'm half good at it on my best days, maybe so. And Paul, he, he talks about this, um, you know, something, something's influencing them. Somebody's influenced them to, to go back to this other way, where it's like, I told you the, the right way to do this, you know, and we do the same thing. It's like, we knew what we, we tend to know the thing. Well, I don't know if we do or not. Um, but something comes in afterwards and, and, and takes us off our game, right? Takes us off of where we, we know we are supposed to be or where we intended to be. And I think that's what Paul was talking about. It's like, why did you, why did you leave the stuff that you knew what, that you should be doing? Um, and, but there's, like you're saying, there's always something that's going to kind of try to come back in there and undercut the, the work you're doing, the progress you're making. Um, yeah, yeah, the good life that you're trying that you're trying to live. Well, and not to get too circular here, but 
you know, Paul also says, don't use your freedom to satisfy your, to satisfy your simple nature, because there is absolutely a, an approach to these good practices, to this good movement, this good direction. There is absolutely a way to distort even that, to be right. restrictive, right? And I've, I've spent a good chunk of my life, probably both of you resonate with this too, I've spent a good chunk of my life engaging in these practices, these good things that we're talking about, but for the wrong reasons and it not being um, life-giving and freeing. And so I think anyone who's listening to this, um, if you're like, oh, well, I am doing those things. I am reading my Bible every day and I'm making sure I watch every more Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And I'm doing all these things, but I feel great crap. Um, yeah, there, you can do all the right stuff, but it can still not be freeing. And if it's not freeing, that's something that you should talk to somebody else about and, and work through. Um, cause like I said, I've, I've had years of my life and I know plenty of people who have tried this, have tried this way of life, um, tried following Jesus and found it really restrictive. And, um, speaking for myself, I was doing it wrong. Um, and I think I had the wrong idea of what it meant. So, um, this stuff is complex. It's not as simple as do the right thing or don't do the right thing. <laughs> Um, it's really easy to make this freedom into just a new form of loss. Well, well, I think there, there's a, there's a story. I'm okay, sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. I was going to say it soon. I probably need to leave in a minute. So I was going to say that's a good place to wrap up, but here, say the story, say the story. Okay. So there's a story that Jesus tells or no, that's told of Jesus. There's a, a young man they call him the rich young ruler. And right. he's that guy you're talking about. Dan is that. He did all the right stuff. He knew all the right stuff, but his heart never was, it wasn't going to be for what Jesus wanted it to be for. He missed so the he, he missed the point and he walked away sad. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, if we tell people, if you memorize your Bible and do all these different things, then we're just setting up a new law, right? Sure. But if we want to live according to the flesh, or if we want to live according to the spirit, there are some practices that we do, but not not so we can be proud about them, but because they draw us closer to Christ. They don't make us look better than other people. Sometimes they're going to make us look foolish or odd or whatever. And that's not a good sales pitch necessarily, because I don't want to be that oddball. But, yep, I'm going to get up early so I can, like, start my day with a little bit of um, centeredness or whatever, right? So. Yeah, I, I think if if your if your faith if your if your Jesus following, if you will, if it's not making you a more loving, more free, more open-hearted person to what God is doing, then you're probably missing the point. Yep. Amen. Agreed. Hey, so we got one more night, one more uh, Tuesday night next week, right before we have Turkey Day or Ham Day or whatever you might eat at your house. Tofurky. Pizza nice. tofurky. Oh. No animals. No animals in our house. <laughs> All nice. right. Just rug rats. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, cool. we're going to wrap it up. I Good stuff, fellas. Had fun. I think we'll probably do it on Zoom again next week, I guess. And yeah. Sounds, Sounds like good. a plan. Love you guys. All right. You too. Peace. Good night. See you later.